This video describes methods for determining adequate sample sizes for estimating statistical tolerance limits. Statistical tolerance limits use the information contained in N observations randomly sampled from a population to make a statement about a given proportion of that population at a stated level of confidence. There are two types of limits. There are two-sided intervals that consist of both a lower limit and an upper limit, and there are one-sided bounds that consist of one limit only. If the data are randomly sampled from a normal distribution, then a two-sided tolerance interval can be constructed by taking the sample mean plus and minus a multiple of the sample standard deviation. The multiple is usually called k. For one-sided confidence bounds, you take the sample mean either plus a multiple of s in the case of an upper confidence bound or minus a multiple of s in case of a lower confidence bound. For data that are randomly sampled from other distributions, tolerance intervals are calculated based on approximations of confidence intervals for quantiles of that distribution. To determine an appropriate sample size for estimating statistical tolerance limits, in StatGraphics 18, on the main menu, select Tools, Sample Size Determination, Statistical Tolerance Limits. You'll see this Data Input dialog box. The first thing to select is the distribution from which the data have been drawn. There are 11 different probability distributions beginning with Cauchy and ending with Weibull. There's also a selection that assumes the data are normally distributed after a transformation is performed. The transformation is typically something like a logarithm or some sort of power transformation. You can also select non-parametric, which will estimate non-parametric tolerance limits without making any assumption about the distribution of the observations. Depending upon the distribution you select, you'll be asked to enter the value of one or more parameters. In the case of the normal distribution, you need to specify the mean and the standard deviation. You next indicate the type of limits that you'll be estimating. You can select two-sided tolerance limits, a lower limit only, or an upper limit only. The next two edit fields specify the confidence level of the tolerance limits and also the proportion of the population to which they apply. Finally, you must specify either a lower specification limit, an upper specification limit, or both. StatGraphics 18 uses Monte Carlo simulation to determine the smallest sample size n, such that at least x percent of all tolerance intervals or bounds generated from the assumed distribution will satisfy the specification limits. At the bottom of the data input dialog box, you specify the desired inclusion percentage the number of trials to generate at each step of the simulation and the maximum value of n to consider. The program will start with a small value of n and increment it one unit at a time until the desired percentage of all simulated tolerance intervals are within the spec. It should be noted that depending upon the parameters of the distribution and the specification limits, there may not be a solution to the problem. As an example, suppose our data come from a normal distribution with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 3. We wish to create a two-sided statistical tolerance interval 
which will bound 99% of the population with 95% confidence. The specification limits range from a low of 40 to a high of 60. We want to have a 99.9% .9 chance that when we calculate intolerance interval, it falls completely within the specification limits. In order to calculate the sample size I need, I've loaded StackGraphics 18. I'll now go to the Tools menu to Sample Size Determination and select Statistical Tolerance Limits. I'm going to assume my data come from a normal distribution. The mean of the normal distribution is 50, the standard deviation is 3. I'm interested in calculating two-sided tolerance intervals. I want to be 95% confident about 99% of the population when I calculate the intervals. My specifications range from a low limit of 40 to an upper spec limit of 60. As far as the simulation is concerned, I want 99.9% of all my calculated tolerance intervals to fall within the spec. So I'll run this simulation with 10,000 trials and I'll stop and abandon the simulation if n reaches 30,000. When I press OK, the simulation will begin. When it ends, an analysis window will be displayed. The results of the simulation indicate that I need a sample of 203 observations. With that many observations, 99.92% of the 10,000 simulated intervals fell within the specification limits. The graph on the right plots the normal distribution with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 3. It also shows the width of a 95-99 statistical tolerance interval based on 203 observations. You'll see that it's a little more narrow than the distance between the specs which ranged from 40 to 60. That allows for estimation error. While the same approach works for other distributions such as the gamma distribution or the Weibull distribution, Things need to be done differently if you want to construct non-parametric tolerance intervals. A non-parametric tolerance interval consists of the range covered by the data. The tolerance limits are actually the smallest observation in the sample and the largest observation in the sample. It turns out that there's a specific sample size n for which the range of the data corresponds to a tolerance interval for a specified proportion of the data at a specified level of confidence. StatGraphics 18 can find that n for you. Returning to StatGraphics 18, I'll press the right mouse button and select Analysis Options. That will redisplay the dialog box I filled out before. I'll now select the radio button labeled non-parametric. Notice how there are no parameters to specify. I don't need to specify the specification limits or the inclusion percentage. When I press OK, it will determine for me the required sample size to do a 95-99 statistical tolerance interval, a non-parametric interval, which doesn't assume any particular distribution for the data. In this case, I need 473 observations. If you'd like more details on determining sample size for estimating statistical tolerance intervals, Take a look at Chapter 8 of my book, Process Capability Analysis, Estimating Quality, published by CRC Press.